Hi everyone, welcome to Yoga in Somerset. I'm Karen and I'd like to introduce the first of my new series of videos called Study and Practice Videos. They're a little bit different from the ordinary yoga practice cycles that we get a lot of on YouTube. The idea is that you learn to study the positions in a little bit more depth to understand not only how to do them, but also their meaning. I'm going to be working with this book, The Soul Dimension of Yoga by Heinz Grill. There are details about how to order this book if you want your own copy um, printed at the end of this video. So today we're going to be working with Halasana, the plough. And I'd like to start by first of all looking at a picture of the plough from the book. Here's the picture. This is Heinz Grill performing the exercise, the author of the book. And let's start by looking, first of all, at the base of the position, the part that we can see touching the ground. You can see that the head is quite relaxed, the neck is long, the shoulders have a good contact with the ground, and the arms are straight, gliding along the ground. The fingers are clasped. Then let's look at the back. And the creases in the t-shirt are quite telltale as to the kind of activity that's going on. You can see that the back is lengthening upwards, both the upper part of the spine and also the middle part is stretched and also the lower part. The whole back is lengthened. And then you can see that this activity continues right the way through into the legs. The backs of the legs are really stretched right through into the heels. You can see how the toes point towards the head. So looking at the whole picture, we can see that there is a really active center at the solar plexus right in the middle of the back or the middle of the trunk. And that this activity grows through the spine and down through the legs and then is balanced in a counter movement going in the opposite direction through the arms. So that's our picture of the position. Let's now come to some preparatory movements. Before you do the plow, it's important that your spine is warmed up. So I would suggest doing something like Surya Namaskar, the sun salutations. So if you haven't already done that, then um, just pause this video and do a few rounds on your own um, before coming to the plow. So we're going to do several different variations um, before coming into the actual plough itself to prepare the body. For the first variation, we're going to take the legs above the head. You can swing your legs over. And from this position, take first one arm and then the other arm above the head. In the picture, you noticed how the head was really resting on the ground, how the neck was long. This position helps the shoulders to relax. It helps the arms to relax. And it also opens up the sides so that you can feel the breath flowing more freely in the sides. Often the breath can feel a bit constricted in the chest in the plough, so this is really helpful. Before coming down, take your hands back behind your back again and support yourself as you roll back down. and relax. Okay, so we'll come to a second variation where we now spread the legs widely apart. This is a bit more dynamic. If you already know these movements, you can do them with me. 
Otherwise, watch this video first and then replay it to join in. So we can swing back up again. And this time we can open the legs and support the back with the hands. If you remember from the picture, we looked at how the back was growing. It grew right through its length and with the legs spread apart like this, we could more easily find this growth. Remember how the growth continues actively outwards through the legs, right into the heels. Let the breath flow. In particular, you can notice the sides again in this movement. Let the breath flow into the sides. Then close your legs, put your hands on the floor and roll back out of the position. And relax on your back. So, for a third variation or preparation, we're going to keep the arms on the ground behind the back. This preparation exercises the thoracic spine more, the, part, the higher part of the spine between the shoulder blades. So you can come into the position, keeping the shoulders, the upper arms, the forearms, the wrists, and also the hands, all in contact with the ground. Take a little bit of time to consciously feel that contact so that you can feel a calm sense of the surface beneath you. Gradually you can feel how your body can start to rise up more easily from the thoracic spine. After some time, you can then clasp the hands together as they are in the full plough. Draw your shoulder blades and your elbows a bit closer together and stretch your arms along the ground. This helps you to propel the body up even more out of the thoracic spine. And you can allow the breath to flow quite fully and freely into the abdomen. This is a movement which actively stretches the thoracic spine. And when you're ready, roll out of the movement and relax lying on your back. And we'll come to a next variation. This one is with the legs spread widely apart. For this one, take your arms above your head once again. And then spread your legs as before. But this time we're going to take the feet all the way down to the ground. But to do this, we need to consciously lengthen the back upwards. And that's really important. You lengthen the back as you lower your legs. Strength and flexibility need to balance each other in this movement. We shouldn't just flop down out of pure flexibility. Lengthening the back up. And out of this comes the active stretch downwards with the legs. If possible, the toes can come to the floor. If not, keep them in the air. Once the toes are on the ground, you can touch the toes with your fingers. And in this position, you can experience the flowing movement up through the sides 
and outwards into the legs. It brings an experience of expansion. In spite of the constriction in your chest, you can feel the expansion out into the legs. To come out of the position, take the hands behind your back and close your legs as you roll out. Finally, we can come into the full plow. For this one, take your arms up above your head once again. And this time, keep the legs together, but as before, really lengthen your back as you bring the legs down. The back lengthens up. And the legs continue that stretch outwards through their backs into the heels. Always growing and lowering simultaneously. Growing up, lengthening back down through the legs until eventually, if possible, the toes come to the floor, but don't force anything. And then you can take the hands behind your back, along the ground, fingers clasped. And we can experience the movement as we saw in the picture. The lengthened back, all the way through its length, continuing out through the backs of the legs. The toes are directed towards the head. And the arms flow along the ground in the opposite direction to balance out the position. You can feel the breath flowing into the depth of the abdomen. The plow can feel like quite a constricted position. But we're now going to do a variation which can give us a contrasting feeling of openness. Take your hands to support your back and raise one leg right up high above you. Actively lengthen into both legs. You can feel, it, feel how the breathing opens out. Change sides. Once again, lengthening up into both legs. Up into one leg, out into the other leg. Feel the breath. Come back down again. Lower your hands to the ground and roll back down and relax on your back. So I'd like to come to a next concept now, and this is the meaning of the plow. So I'm going to take a little passage of text from the book, The Soul Dimension of Yoga. Each chapter begins with a description of the picture and the meaning of the exercise. The words are quite, um, they contain quite a lot. And so it's important just to take a, a maximum of one paragraph, even just one sentence or a few words to concentrate on any one time. So I'm going to read from the second paragraph in the chapter on the plow, Halasana. I'll read out this whole paragraph. Practitioners begin lying on their back, swing their legs over their head, and first of all remain in the preparatory stage of the inversion until they then finally lower their legs to the floor and bring the movement to rest in motionlessness. From above, the legs glide slowly downwards until they finally touch solid ground behind the head. 
This moment of lowering the legs should be consciously experienced because it is a moment of expectation, a subtle openness within the stretch that glides out until finally the actual nature of the plough, which penetrates with its blade into the earth, has been achieved. It is a movement that leads rhythmically and dynamically to a close relationship with the earth. So I'd like to just focus on a couple of thoughts from this passage and then do the exercise together again. I'd like to focus on this sentence that goes, this moment of lowering the legs should be consciously experienced because it is a moment of expectation, a subtle openness within the stretch that glides out. I'd like to focus on that moment of expectation and then finally, the final sentence in the paragraph, it is a movement that leads rhythmically and dynamically to a close relationship with the earth. So we'll focus on the moment of expectation and then the movement that leads rhythmically and dynamically to a close relationship with the earth. We'll keep those words in our minds as we do the exercise again. Once again, come into the movement and take the arms up above your head. And as we now lengthen up through the back and lower the legs slowly downwards, let's Become aware that this is a moment of expectation, of subtle openness, before we finally form the actual plough, lengthening the back, lowering the legs, expectation and openness, lengthening the back, lowering the legs and finally we take the legs down and take the arms along the ground behind your head we come rhythmically and dynamically to a close relationship with the earth And to come out of the position, place your hands on the floor and roll back out of the movement again. So I'd like to come to a next question now, which is what can we carry over into life from this exercise? Every position has a meaning but it's also a meaning that can be transferred into life. And I'd like to look at the next paragraph of this chapter, and I'll read this out. In the inverted position, practitioners experience themselves on the one hand open, but on the other hand constricted by the movement. And out of this state of tension, they seek the path to the earth. The image of transformation is expressed in the inverted position and in the whole dynamically executed movement in which the feeling for the ground, for the earth and the longing for expansiveness in a notion of the spirit are vividly intertwined. There's a lot to take in in this paragraph and so it's really important not to try and bite off more than we can chew. 
but I'd like to just talk about my understanding that I came to after a bit of pondering over these ideas. And I thought about the idea of constriction and the idea about transformation. And it's very often the case in life that a transformation only comes about after a period of constriction, after a period in which we have to grapple with constricting situations and really deal with the very practical earthly problems of life. Out of that comes something new, out of that comes transformation. That was how I made sense of those words. But what I'd like to do is come into the movement together one more time and just looking at the sentences again, we've got various concepts in there. We've got on the one hand constricted and on the other hand open. On the one hand we're open, on the other hand we're constricted. And then we've got the idea that we're seeking out of this tension the path to the earth and that this expresses the image of transformation. So I'd like to stay with these four concepts as we do our practice now. Openness, constriction, the path to the earth and transformation. We'll try and keep those four things in mind as we do the plough. Come into the starting position once again. Take your arms over your head. And now begin to lengthen the back upwards. As before, gradually lowering the legs down in this movement of expectation and openness. Lengthening up with the back. Lowering down with the legs. Lengthening up with the back. Lowering down right through the legs until eventually the toes come onto the ground. Take the hands once again behind you along the floor. Clasp the hands. Lengthen the arms along the ground. And let's come to those thoughts from that paragraph. On the one hand, constricted. On the other hand, open. The path to the earth. And the process of transformation. To come out of the movement, flatten your hands onto the ground again and roll back down and relax. And remain aware of your breathing. Finally, we can finish now with a counter pose. We'll do the fish. So for the fish, take your arms right underneath your body, draw your shoulder blades together. Take your hands side by side onto the floor. Come right up high onto your elbows. Open your chest and then drop the head back and lower the top of the head gently down. The thoracic spine is actively contracted in this position. The chest is opened and you can experience the breath flowing into the collarbone region. And then slide back down again and relax lying on your back.
and come back up to a sitting position. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're a yoga teacher, then you might like to have a look at this next video about um, adjustments in the plough. See you again soon.